Live, this is Munson with Munson Music, and we're going to talk about how you play a song called Shades of Cool by Lana Del Rey. And we end up cabling on 6th fret to kind of match the recording, and if you want to exactly match the recording, you may actually have to go to the tuners and loosen them up just a little bit. The, tune, the, the recording sounds about 20 cents flat, which you normally would divide one fret of notes into 100 cents, so it's just a little bit flat. So we have to go to do your tuners and just loosen each one up just a little bit to kind of match the recording. But we'll walk through a couple things in root position, and it starts off with this really, really cool lick, actually kind of around an A minor chord. When you play A minor, first finger goes to the B on the first fret, second finger on the D on the second fret, and third finger on the G string second fret. And if you strum all those together, all the sad sounds of A minor. Um, now while you're on A minors in general though, you may want to lift off the first finger and kind of make that an A suspended second. Or you could think about adding in the pinky on the B string third and kind of making an A suspended sound. And actually the riff at the very, very beginning, you kind of hear just kind of holding the A sus too and going D, G, B. It's kind of a little arpeggio or broken chord idea around the A. It's kind of a cool little lick to kind of start with. And then from the A minor, we'll be going to an F major. Normally you do this as a first fret bar, a second finger on the G string second, third finger on the A third, pinky on the D string third. And if you strum all those together, that sounds an F major chord that sounds really, really happy. Now, a good substitute for that, though, would be F major 7, where you do first finger on the B first fret, second finger on the G second, third finger on the D third. And if you strum the D string to the high E string, it sounds an F major 7 that sounds really groovy happy. And what it sounds like in the recording is that you would take the F major 7 and kind of lift off the first finger and kind of do that same idea we were just doing on the A. So it's kind of the A sus2 with the D, G, B twice, and then kind of the F major 7 without the first finger. Same idea. And then it sounds like we go to fourth fret on the D string, kind of do that same idea, kind of fourth fret on the D, second fret on the G, open B, and then we go back to our F idea, kind of 3, 2, O, 3, 2, O. So we wanted to, you could kind of follow that loop for the intro. Kind of the A idea, F idea. F sharp idea actually we're kind of playing an F sharp and A and a B on that last part it's kind of an F sharp diminished chord which is kind of nasty cool um, which normally you would use kind of a D7 shape for that you could do first finger on the B string first fret second finger on the G second fret third finger on the high second fret and if you strum the top three strings just the, the G B and E that sounds an F sharp diminished chord normally though we'd be adding in the open D string making that a D7 chord. You want to kind of follow that kind of A minor to the F to the D7 and then back to the F through that change. Or you could just make it a D major chord by doing first finger on the G second, second finger on the high E second, third finger on the B string third. If you strum the D string to the high E string, it sounds a D major chord and sounds really, really happy. So if you want to kind of follow that too, you could even kind of think of it as kind of an A minor to an F idea to a D idea, and then back to the F idea. And the, the feel of the, of the tune actually is kind of working something called 6-8 time, where we can kind of think almost like six downs on each chord, kind of an A minor, F1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, F sharp diminished, F1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm just kind of doing six downs on each of those chords. Or you may want to kind of work that into kind of a strum pattern. And what I think can really kind of match the tune pretty well is down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. Kind of dig on that. So you take the A minor, just try that a lot. Down, down, up, down, up, 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 down, One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we tried that through that intro progression. We have the A minor, F sharp diminished. then we're going into our main verse part which is almost the same idea actually kind of our a minor and then our f but then we just do three on our, our diminished three on our f and then back to our a minor for kind of our full six so a minor into it and you may want to round off that last a minor actually i was kind of digging on kind of a d g b and then high e 
and then B, G, and kind of that last A minor. So we've got our intro idea for the A minor. And the F idea, F to sharp diminished one time, F for, th for that one time, and then kind of end that, that rounded out A minor. A minor, F, F sharp diminished, F, A minor. And then from there, then we go into our pre-chorus part. And our pre-chorus starts on the D major, but then we go to a D minor chord. And we're going to do this first finger on the high E first fret, second finger on the G second fret, third finger on the B string third fret. And if you strum the D string to the high E string, that sounds a D minor chord. This sounds really sad. Um, and then from the D minor, we'd be going back to our A minor. So through our pre-chorus, uh, we've got kind of a D, D minor. First finger goes to A on the second fret, second finger on the low E third fret, and third finger on the high E third fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds a G major chord and it sounds really happy. Now you may also want to think about putting the third finger on the B third pinky on the high E third. Kind of working that for your G major. And then from the G, then we go back to our F, more F, and then we go back to our G, more G. And then from that pre-chorus, then that into our chorus part around the C major chord. And we play C major. First finger goes to the B on the first fret, second finger on the D second fret, third finger on the A string third fret. And if you strum the A string to the high E string, ah, oh, the beautiful sounds of C major. Uh, now you may also want to think about lifting the first finger, making that a C major seven, or adding in the pinky on the B string third, or C major nine, and kind of say some things around the C. Or another way to play C major nine would be doing first finger on the D second. Second finger on the A third, third finger on the B third, pinky on the high E third. And you can kind of work that for your C. And if you're digging on that voicing, I actually kind of work your G to the C that way. Um, you could work an F major 13 for your F chords if you do on that. You could do first finger on the G second, second finger on the D third, third finger on the B third, pinky on the high E third. Kind of an option for the F if you wanted to kind of work around those shapes. And then from the C major on our chorus, then we go to a G minor chord. It's kind of a sad G, and you could just play G major and not worry about this part. Or you could take that four finger G that we were doing and take the first finger and just mute out the A string. So it's kind of a G5 power chord, which could be kind of cool to use that for it. Or you may be able to stretch your first finger back to the A on the first fret and work that as kind of a G minor on that way. Or normally you would do this as a third fret bar, third finger on the A fifth, pinky on the D fifth, so G minor. Or you can lift off the pinky and make it a G minor 7. Or you may add in the pinky on the B string on the 6th fret for G minor 7. You can kind of dig on that too. So through that whole chorus, we've got kind of our C, C, G minor, F, F, G major, G major. It's kind of cool that it's like, sat on the way down and then we come back up was happy as well. I just think that's a really cool progression. Um, now the weird part is to play along with Lana Del Rey, instead of starting on an A minor chord, it sounds like she's starting on an E flat minor chord. So to play along with the recording, what you want to do is take a capo, and if you put the capo on 6th fret, then now your A minor is really an E flat minor, and your F is really a B major, and your F sharp diminished is really a C diminished. And when we get to it, the D major is really a G sharp major. And the D minor is really a G sharp minor. And your G minor is really a C sharp minor. And your G major is really a C sharp major. So it's a little weird kind of, kind of how that works out. But we start off on our intro, we got kind of our A minor idea. And then our F idea, F sharp diminished. You may just want to strum through that A minor, F, F sharp diminished, F down, 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 down. And then from there, then we'll be going into our verse idea. Now, a couple different ways you could do that. We could kind of work just that same lick idea, kind of the A minor, F. But then we got our F sharp for three, F for three, A minor. 
minor for the six, and you may want to kind of work in that rounded out A minor lick. strumming, kind of A minor, F, F sharp diminished for three, F for three, A minor, A minor, F, F sharp diminished, F, A minor, and then from there, then we'll be going into our pre-chorus part, so we have our D, D minor, A minor, or instead of the strumming, you may want to kind of break up the chord, a similar way to the intro might be kind of a cool way to kind of work it to you may want to kind of experiment with it and kind of find a way that works for you or even go back and forth between those ideas kind of working little single note ideas through it too from the G then we'll be going into our chorus part so we have our C Verse. Now, one other thing I'd think about adding to the song that was bass notes, and a lot of times on that first down of the down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, you could throw in a bass for the chord. So on the A minor, you'd have the A for the bass. On the F, you'd have the D for the bass for the F major 7. On the bar, if you'd have low E for the bass. Or for the, for the D7, you may want to use the D for the bass on that chord. For the D major, you'd have the D bass. For the D minor, you'd have the E bass. Have an A for the bass, and on the G minor you'd have a low E for the bass. So we tried that next verse with basses. The one weird part is where we got diminished, and then the F is kind of that three count. So you want to even work it. I'm, I'm kind of digging on working the, the F sharp diminished from the lick actually, kind of doing the D for the bass, and then F major seven is kind of the D with the bass down and down up on each of those. So you have the A minor. Basis. We have the D. Our 
outro part. It's kind of these big down hits on our chords. We got kind of a big C. We're going to want to kind of arpeggiate some of those, kind of break up little pieces. And then the G minor. That's the basics of how you can strum through Shades of Cool by Lana Del Rey. So good luck!